Jack was half lying under a heavy cast iron wash tub. The side of his face was blown off. I remember his arm either dangling or that was blown off and there was a lot of blood and Jack was dead. He was dead. His eye, one, I had only one eye and I saw his eye was open, but you could see all his teeth, his jaws, the flesh. Well, let me tell you about Jack Parsons. Parsons was a genius. Parsons was a mystic. Parsons was a crazy man. He and his old buddy from uh, junior high, Ed Foreman, had been sending off rockets, sky rockets, bottle rockets. Supposedly their backyard here in Pasadena was pockmarked with rockets that had been sent up. Uh, but they had reached the limits of what they as amateur experimenters could do. Uh, they wanted to know the theory behind the practical applications that had already figured out. So you go to where the theory is taught. You go to Caltech. They turn up uh, at uh, Theodor von Karman's door, uh, saying to him, uh, Dear Dr. von Karman, we're just a couple of townspeople. We would like to find out a little bit more about rockets. Uh, understand you, you're the one to tell us. And uh, von Karman, a genius, uh, a master teacher, says to them, Boys, I'm going to send you off down the hall to one of my favorite graduate students who's come here from Texas and who's also interested in rockets, a fellow by the name of Frank Molina. And out of that relationship between Parsons and Molina, I think there was a great interaction between the two. One, the theorist with a dream. One, the practitioner with a dream whose dreams came together and demanded money to make it work. And on a nice fall afternoon, they drove up, set up this rocket motor on the floor of the Arroyo Seco, just a little ways up above the Rose Bowl, without any homes around, any people around, much is going to make a devil of a noise when the, when the motor worked. The final aim of the JATO test was to have the airplane, the air coupe, fly without a propeller. And well, this is, this is fine, except from a standing start, by the time you get almost to flying speed, the rockets will have burned themselves out and they'll stop. So uh, the idea was, let's move them along a little bit. So we got a truck ahead of us, tied a rope, and I held the rope so I could decide when to let go and we saved all that rocket time until we got almost to flying speed. Then I let go of the rope, lit the rockets, and away we went.